Okay, oh, you can hear me, perfect. Great to see you all. My name is Akash. Uh, I work in product at Stripe, specifically on the crypto team. Now, you're probably wondering what Stripe crypto does or why the crypto team even exists. Um, and to help answer that, um, you can kind of think of Stripe in one of two different ways. You can either think of Stripe as a payments company or as a API company that builds APIs to solve developers' hardest problems. Now, 10 years ago, when we were asking ourselves that question, one of the hardest problems developers faced was payments on the internet. And so for the last 10 years, we've been focusing on that and building solutions in that space. But when we apply that same first principle of thinking to Web3 developers, we end up with slightly different answers. And so we started the Stripe Crypto team to help build tools for Web3 developers specifically. Now, uh, we started this team about a year ago. This was the first conference we actually went to, and here we are a year later. In the last year, we've built solutions across the spectrum. We've built fiat solutions for Web3 companies, things to make ACH transfers, identity, and financial connections easier. We've built crypto as a currency products. A few months ago, we launched Crypto Payout, which makes it easier for companies in one country to convert fiat assets to crypto assets in order to make international transfers easier, cheaper, and more efficient. And in the coming days, we're going to be announcing our first truly native Web3 developer tool product. Now, when I say Web3 developer tool, what I'm implying is that we're focusing on the problems that developers who are building native Web3 applications are facing. And one of the biggest problems that we've seen Web3 developers face is the difficulty in onboarding consumers to their platform services and products. Now, the biggest problem is that non-crypto native consumers have a hard time understanding the co technical complexity around wallets, message signing, transactions, hashes, etc. And it gets in the way of them using particularly valuable consumer-oriented products. And so in the coming few days, we're going to be announcing um, one of our solutions to help make part of this problem a little bit easier, our fiat to crypto on-ramp. Now, I want to tell you about what makes our Fiat to Crypto on ramp particularly valuable and useful, but I think it would be easier to show you utilizing one of our 15 um, launch partners, specifically Audius. <laughs> Please excuse internet issues. We're going to fix this. And uh, yeah, excited to be here too. So, uh, uh, just introducing uh, Audius quickly. We're a music community and discovery platform that puts the artist in control. Do that by being fully uh, decentralized, owned, and operated by the community that it serves, and serving today about seven million fans on a monthly basis, over 250,000 artists, and uh, hosting over a million tracks. Um, as an artist here, you can. Uh, build a fan base, engage them, share cool content with them, uh, as, as you can see up here. And um, as, a, as a fan on Audius, you can uh, you know, discover cool content. And uh, you can uh, also go tip your favorite artists, which we're, we're excited to, uh, to get to show you a little bit more of today. And so I'm a particularly huge fan of Audius itself. And so I want to tip Audius using their native audio token. Now, if I want to get the audio token, uh, I, as a crypto native consumer, know that I can go to Radium or Uniswap and swap ETH or Solana um, for the asset. But as a non-native crypto consumer, that confuses the heck out of me. And another great thing about Audius is that they give me a wallet when I sign up for the platform. And I want to just have audio in that wallet. And so I see this button here that says, buy more audio. And I see an option to buy using Link by Stripe. I want to tip them a ton because I'm a huge fan of the product. So I'm going to go ahead and try and tip 50. And so now what audio is doing here is it's going to quote me exactly what I need uh, to buy the soul, which will then automatically be uh, swapped for the audio token and deposited to my audio, uh, Audius wallet in the application itself. And so barring Wi-Fi um, or barring, barring internet uh, uh, lag. So what's happened here is that it's pre-populated what I need to buy, how much of it I need to buy, and the cost associated with it, and the token that I'm going to be buying. I, as a consumer, don't need to pick any of these things. Audius did it all for me um, and the parameters they used to instantiate the product in the first place. Now, we utilize a lot of uh, the infrastructure that we have at Stripe to make this experience as easy as possible for consumers. So when I use the on-ramp, I don't have to type much at all. I can just log in using WebAuthn. And it, authentic it, uh, it authenticates me, both for security purposes and for me as a consumer. It's the most convenient way for me to just continue with the onboarding flow of the product. Now, when, when depositing a, uh, assets, I normally need a wallet. But like I mentioned, Audius gives me a wallet. And Audius pre-populated that for me. Uh, it tells me why this wallet's being shown here. But it doesn't, for, as a consumer, I don't need to, nor do I want to, have to deal with the complexity of changing this. So I'm going to go ahead and use this wallet. I have a payment method saved um, in Link by Stripe. So I'm going to go ahead and review my order. And I'm going to go ahead and just pay. Um, 
And it's as simple as that. So the, the important thing to call out here is that the on-ramp is an embedded part of what we're seeing in the Audius audio flow. I'm not being asked to go to a different product on a different site. I'm going to review the order. Live demos are always really fun. Um, but the important thing is that I'm not being asked to change uh, websites, go to a different domain, and engage in a completely separate, disparate transaction. I'm able to do everything on the site itself. Um, and that is what makes this particularly uh, useful as a consumer who is less experienced with the space. And once the payment goes through, again, we're going to see if it's going to let me here, given the Wi-Fi issues. Okay, let me try and changing the methods here. So the nice thing is that we have multiple methods saved, and so it should be easier um, to use a number of different ways to pay for the product. The point being, though, so I've tested this transaction multiple times backstage, and so we've seen that it does work. I think it's just a Wi-Fi issue right now, um, but that's an easy, easy thing to blame. And so once this payment does go through, I'm able to see the, the past transactions and buying the audio token um, on a block explorer, like in this case, specifically SoulScan. And so this is the wallet that Audius has spun up for me. And this is where you can see all my past transactions um, using the Stripe crypto on-ramp. Again, I didn't need to know my wallet address or anything around the complexity around uh, uh, depositing to a specific wallet in order to actually use the product. Audius did everything for me, pre-populated all the parameters and all the transaction details. All I had to do was pick which artist I wanted to tip on the audio platform. And so with that, we actually want to help uh, introduce another one of our pilot partners, Fast AF, specifically Lee and Vivian from Fast AF, who are going to come and talk about how Fast AF is taking advantage of the Stripe on-ramp to build a better and more palatable experience for consumers who are non-crypto native. Let them continue. All right. Wow. Well, now we know what day they, they saved the alpha announcements for. We're just waiting on some slides. Hello and good morning. My name is Lena Tinka, and I'm the CEO and founder of Fast AF. At Fast AF, we believe that profound change happens when you provide access to something. It could be economic, physical, social, and our mission at Fast AF has been to enable merchants access to a distributed network of, multi of, uh, of micro fulfillment centers that enable two hour delivery. So our first customer at Fast AF was Nike. We enabled Nike to have two hour delivery on Nike.com. And I know what you're all wondering, what does the AF stand for? Well, actually, it came out of a brainstorm session with Nike when we wanted to create fast Air Force Ones. And so that's where the name came from. But beyond that, our mission, has been able, our mission is to enable every single merchant to have access to this distributed network of micro fulfillment centers. And so now we have thousands of products from hundreds of merchants available in minutes. But we started to ask ourselves a question. And we started to say, is the access we're providing the most important thing to merchants today? And when we spoke to merchants, in fact, the things they told us was the things that matter most are payments and customer acquisition. And so we codified this. And the th three things that we've thought about were time, type, and tolls. So on the payment side of things, with credit cards, it takes three to five days for credit card processors to get a merchant their dollars. That's the most important thing to them. These are localized currencies, and there's a bunch of interchange fees. On the customer acquisition side, um, most, most merchants use Instagram ads to acquire customers. These are low LTV customers. They don't stick around for long. Okay? And you know, Instagram, you know, they need to reinvent their ad model. So if you're wondering why they're launching NFTs, that's why. And you know, as a merchant, you have to pay a fee, which is the CAC for the ads. So we started to get to know the Solana guys. Um, most of you who are out here today have been a part of our journey. And a lot of what we've thought about is, well, payments and customer acquisition can be solved with crypto and NFTs. And on the, on the payment side, it's because there's no interchange fees. All there is is the gas fees. 
Literally, it's 300 thousandths of a penny for us to process payments on blockchain. On the customer acquisition side, NFTs have completely flipped customer acquisition on its head because you buy an NFT before there's even any utility beyond just a PFP. So with that, this isn't a new phenomenon. You know, American Express has been around for 170 years, and in fact, they started off as a delivery company. Um, but why most people have it is for the rewards, the loyalty, and yes, to pay over time. And so what we're doing here is thinking about NFTs as credit cards. And that's our long-term vision. Today, you're going to see um, our announcement around how we think about NFTs as rewards, um, access tokens, and creating loyalty. But eventually, our goal is to replace these guys. So three announcements today. One, we're reinventing customer engagement. On Fast AF, every single merchant starting tomorrow will be able to launch an NFT and, and create exclusive products that their holders can access. The second announcement is we're bringing real utility to life for NFTs. So you and I both have an NFT that's a PFP, but we think about NFTs as file types, as discounts, as coupons, as reward and access tokens. And you'll see that in a moment of how that, that enables a customer, because there's an NFT in their wallet, which is integrated in FastAF, how they can get that discount um, without even having to do anything. And the last and biggest announcement that we're making today is we are transforming a new era of payments with Link built by Stripe on Solana. So here is where Akash and team just showed you how with just two taps, once uh, a user has KYC to cross the network, a, 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 a user can pay with crypto and not even know that they're actually doing it. And so let's talk about why Solana? Well, the speed, the low gas fees, and the future promise of reliability. So for us, you know, Solana has been a part of our journey, uh, and that's one part. The second part is Stripe. Um, you know, Stripe, we have really thought about how do we enable Web3 for non-crypto natives? And their, their, their fiat on-ramp does that. And so we're pretty excited, and I'd love to um, have you welcome our head of engineering who graduated high school at 15 and graduated college at 19, Vivian Dow. Good morning, everyone. My name is Vivian Dow. Now you're thinking, does that stand for Decentralized Autonomous Organization and also mean I have the coolest last name in this room? Perhaps. I am the head of engineering here at FastAF Technologies. When we first launched FastAF back in September 2020, our legacy e-commerce infrastructure was completely operating on Web2 frameworks. Since then, I became fascinated with how to leverage blockchain technology to bring a new marketplace experience in front of users. I ran my engineering team through rigorous daily sprints, mini hackathons, and crash courses so that we can become fully equipped to build on the Solana blockchain. It was quite easy to get lost in the maze of new library upgrades week after week, learning new token metadata language and backwards incompatible changes, learning how to handle that, and endlessly running into obscure minting errors. Nonetheless, we took a step back to understand what was the root issue that we're building for. The fundamental mission that drives our day-to-day -day engineering decisions was understanding how we can build for a performant, seamless, and elegant consumer experience. Before we dive deeper into the technicalities, I'd love to showcase a preview of what we've been heads down building for the past few months.
All right, here we present a unified experience in which we've integrated a Solana-based embedded wallet and introduced on-chain experiences into our marketplace. This now brought a new challenge that we had to solve for on a technical level. We're now processing an extra layer of on-chain validation with every single order transaction from a customer. Performance, scaling, and handling high throughput rates was critical when building our end-to-end -end architecture. So let's take another dive into how we solve for this. Our NFT infrastructure, the distribution and minting of NFTs, all of that logic is hosted in a separate Node.js microservice, which acts as a direct proxy for our backend systems to make direct calls to the blockchain. From there, we're leveraging libraries like Metaplex to store all of our token metadata permanently on-chain, and that also serves as the backbone for tokenizing our exclusive experiences and promotions. Our chosen RPC node provider is QuickNode. It contains pre-made fetching, fetching and indexing and caching layers to make the entire experience performant. Up next is the actual powering exclusive experiences and how we bring utility benefits to life. We're leveraging libraries like Web3.js and our own custom NFT lock structure in order to interact with these minted NFTs on an application layer. Fundamentally, every single consumer needs to have their own crypto wallet to view, receive, and own these NFTs that they're redeeming. Our chosen wallet provisioner is magic.link. It enables users to automatically generate a crypto address and a key pair with just a phone number in a matter of seconds. Last but not least, our newest feature with crypto payments. We are now enabling users to instantly check out our app with USDC. We are so excited to be the first ever pilot partner with Stripe's newest product, OnRamp. This is going to power the front of house experience for users to instantly convert their fiat US dollars into crypto and add funds to their crypto wallet. These three experiences are just the beginning of how we begin to see and build for crypto commerce infrastructure. Now, let's go use it. We're officially launching live tomorrow as the first ever iOS mobile application where you can pay for physical goods with crypto natively in app. Thank you. I'm going to give everyone a few seconds to scan this QR code Come join us on the App Store and see how we begin to build and start the journey of a crypto-powered consumer experience. To celebrate, we're giving everyone 10% off their first order paid in crypto on our app. This is only the start of a new era. We want to build for a world where every merchant has the infrastructure available to power their marketplaces with blockchain technology and embrace the adoption of crypto payments. Thank you so much, everyone, for your time today. It has been a great honor sharing how Solana has played a pivotal role in bringing a new level of experiences and innovations to our application. Thank you. I'd love to now invite Shiraz, who's the head of payments here at Solana Labs, to host a mini Q&A session. We are going to do a rapid fire panel in the last five minutes. Fast AF panel. Fast AF panel. Oh, right? yeah. Okay. All right. Let's do um, it. All right. So let's, let's go. Let me start with Akash. Um, that's right. It seems like everyone under the sun is launching on ramps. My Uber driver yesterday was like, hey, I'm launching an on ramp on Solana. So why are you guys doing this, and what is going to make Stri Stripe's offering differentiated? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, w one of the things that I mentioned earlier was that we're focusing on uh, con uh, products that are trying to make the consumer experience significantly easier. Oh. S significantly easier. Can you hear me? Uh, and Just put it closer to your mouth. Consumers who are less familiar with uh, crypto native primitives. And so the honor that you saw, it lets developers like Audience or FastAF pre populate everything from wallets to amounts to transaction details. And it makes it considerably easier for a consumer who has no idea what's going on when buying assets to just engage with the Web3 products um, of choice. And we've seen feedback from developers that the existing solutions, which take you to a different website, force you to do a disparate transaction, and force you to understand how wallets work, simply doesn't solve the onboarding problem. What you want is an experience that's embedded in the application itself at the point of highest intention and leads to as little drop off from consumers as possible. And like what you guys saw is, is a bit of a secret, but we're launching with 15 partners who are all focused on making the consumer experience easier. You guys heard from Backpack a couple days ago. They are 
hugely forward in the space and making it easier to use all kinds of dApps in a single place. They're also using the Stripe on-ramp, and that's the kind of product that we're gearing the on-ramp build towards, and that's what we're excited about uh, in, in, awesome. in the coming days. So consumer experience, that's a good segue. So for Lee and Ronil, um, I think one of the very cool things that we saw is you guys have a experience with self-custodial assets, but it is very Web2 friendly. So question is, how does uh, seamless uh, on-ramp kind of play into that UX, and, and how is kind of Stripe helping out in that experience? Because my first experience with digital assets was kind of the, you know, the, the DGEN, like seed phrase, all this sort of stuff. But you guys have taken that away. Yeah. Um, you know, with FastAF, you sign up just using a phone number. And with Magic, you do the same thing, but it creates a wallet for you. So we took a, we, we don't come from the, the crypto world. We come from a world of creating products for consumers. And so we wanted to make it so they didn't even realize they were creating a wallet. They don't need this seed phrase. And so that's kind of how we think about it. For us, we don't want people to know, hey, this is crypto. We just want them to get the benefits of crypto. Renil? Yeah, I couldn't agree more with that. So I think we, building Audius started from first principles and, and tried to say, how can we build a user experience that is welcoming, accommodating to users of all different uh, backgrounds and understandings and expertise? I think that's what's helped us uh, uh, grow to the size that we are now in, in terms of usage. But um, first and foremost for us, I think that started with um, educating you know, users only on what they need to know to be able to get the benefits that decentralization can provide. Um, and you don't need to, like, yeah, manage a seed phrase and, and uh, uh, go through all these cumbersome steps to be able to get the benefits that you know, self-sovereign decentralized tools can, can provide you. Um, the Stripe on-ramp was really key to that here for, for us because um, you, know, you can now end-to-end -end, uh, load value into your wallet, spend in uh, uh, the audience experience without ever touching any crypto address yourself, right? There's no copy and paste. There's no, none of that, right? Uh, uh, you just get to click top up and you're good. And you can go along about your day in the same way that you would expect to in any traditional uh, uh, Web2 experience. Um, all of that with a uh, self-custodied wallet uh, backing it. I think a good thing to add here is on the merchant side, it's super important as well. And I think, why don't you talk about, like, what are we doing to enable merchants to accept crypto but never actually hold the crypto? Right. So we're, we'll be partnering with Circles, um, new payments intense API. It essentially allows merchants to accept crypto on their platform, but then it sends the funds to an omnibus wallet account. And then from there, it can instantly send and process as an ACH payout to the merchant's account itself. Awesome. So. 30 seconds. So 30 big seconds. problem with UX and on-ramps is decline rates, with, especially with credit cards. Is there something Stripe can do, some secret sauce to like, make that better? Yeah, no, we're acutely aware of, of that being one of the biggest problems that people are seeing right now. Like, I mean, it, it's, it's very painful if a consumer gets through your entire experience and then gets declined at the last minute. We're working with uh, uh, networks, issuers, all sorts of partners in the Stripe ecosystem to make sure that we can solve this problem, um, generally with the high-level goal being like uh, optimized conversion. Right? If you're using the Stripe on-ramp, we want to make sure that it means that your product has the highest conversion possible when forcing an on-ramp flow. Awesome. You guys, this is awesome. We're bullish on payments as the killer use case, so really excited to see this stuff uh, coming online. So thanks, everyone. Woo!